Welcome ladies and gentlemen to 2015's Wolfenstein The Old Blood. My name is Camel and in this video we're going to be taking a look at all of the easter eggs that I could find hidden away within the game. Be sure to let me know if I've left any out, hopefully it's none. Timestamps for each easter egg can be found in the description along with links to my other easter egg videos and my social media links. And just to be clear, an easter egg is an unexpected or undocumented feature in a piece of computer software or on a DVD included as a joke or bonus. So while Easter eggs often are references to something, by definition they do not have to be. And finally, just to save my own hide, given the amount of foreign names and words throughout this video, I do apologise if any of them have been mispronounced. I mean, I could hardly speak English, let alone German. Now the very first Easter egg isn't even in the actual game, it's actually the main menu art, with a shirtless BJ kicking a German soldier over. It might look familiar. Well, this is a direct homage to the box art of the original 1992 Wolfenstein 3D Jaguar edition box art. As we can see, the similarities are uncanny, just simply mirrored and modernized. In a similar fashion, there was the second one. You might have missed it, so let's go back. There is a frame just before the game starts in which the text Get Psyched flashes on the screen. This is a homage to the loading screens from Wolfenstein 3D, in which this Get Psyched text would prep you up for the intense battles ahead. Straight after this Get Psyched throwback, BJ will wake up in a car being driven by Richard Wesley, also known as Agent One. We'll talk more on him later on, but for now what we'll want to do is look down at the very familiar dangling Red Rocket Launcher. This is a keyring version of the Rocket Launcher from Quake 3, another gaming IP brought to fruition and popularised by id Software, the same as Wolfenstein. At the end of this car ride, once through the first security gate, we'll be prompted to grab our fake German passport slash citizen card ID. If we pause it and look really closely, we'll see that the fake name that they went with is Helmut Franz, while a perfectly normal German name Helmut is also slang for a man's genitalia, specifically the tip. And while there was a German conductor called Helmut Franz, I think it's more likely that Machine Games went for the old dick gag over referencing an almost unknown conductor. Now we'll also notice that this fictional Helmut Franz is from the city of Frankfurt. This plays into our next easter egg, which takes place as we attempt to make our way through a passport check. Rudy Jaeger the Aryan Beast will come out and this conversation transpires. Augenblick, warten Sie. Aus Frankfurt. Sind Sie Frankfurter? Ja, äh, ein Hot Dog. <lacht> <lacht> Das war ein komischer Kreis. Die Spinnen, die Arme. Hot Dog. Die werden sich wundern, wenn wir an der Macht sind. Weiter. Kreta. Bei Fuß. This hot dog phrase the Blaskowitz expressed out of anxiety during the document check by Rudy Jaeger at the guard post is an old joke in regards to poor voice acting of the enemies in 1992's Wolfenstein 3D, with many people hearing guards saying hot dog instead of Achtung! I personally cannot hear any similarities, but it would appear that Machine Games had a good old and very public laugh at the ancient 1990s hot dog meme. Now just as we exit the security check, if we turn to our right, we can see a key on the bench. Grab that. Once downstairs, come out of the elevator and head to the gate on the right. We can open it with the newly acquired key. Head down the stairs and we will find a bedroll with a poster which bears the artwork of the original 1992 Wolfenstein 3D box art. Not only that, but if you activate the bedroll, this will transport you to a special revamped version of the original 1992 Wolfenstein 3D. These are known as nightmare levels within Wolfenstein The Old Blood. In this first nightmare level, there is a secret hidden level within it. Near the end of the level, through the second secret wall, where there would normally be a secret exit, 
it is actually a secret elevator that will transport you to a secret level. Once in here and after wandering around the purple rooms for hours on end, eventually we'll find a key. As soon as you pick up the key, if you turn and press this wall, a secret will be revealed. At the end of the secret hallway, there are the letters MG laid out in health packs. MG in this circumstance represents Machine Games, the very gaming developers that made Wolfenstein the Old Blood and the New Order and the New Colossus. A very well hidden easter egg, four layers of secrets deep in fact. And also once you finally get out of this first secret level, I noticed that the bottles laying next to the bed actually bear the face of the original 1992 Wolfenstein 3D BJ Blazkowicz face. We'll have to zoom in a little bit to see it properly, but we can see the resemblance. Forget resemblance, it's an obvious nod. Next, once we make our way to the castle via the cable car, as soon as we hop off, we can run over to the ticket booth and stick our nosy heads through the window and listen in on the intriguing phone call. Okay, it's not that intriguing, but it is kind of funny. The man on the phone is Carl, and he is talking to Helga von Schwabs, one of the main antagonists of the game. At first, it seems like a standard business call, but we'll soon realize that there is a fair bit of flirting going on here. Carl and Helga sitting in a tree. H-E-I-L-I-N-G. And now while this isn't entirely amazing, we'll come back to Helga and Carl in a minute. As for now though, we might want to get something from the vending machines. I'm feeling a bit thirsty. What's on the menu, boys? Oh, would you look at that? Nuka Cola. That sounds refreshing and as energizing as a healthy dose of radiation. Now, Nuka Cola is, of course, the famous fictional brand of cola found throughout the Fallout game series. The Fallout series and the Wolfenstein series are both also published by Bethesda Softworks. Also, the Supersoft logo, which can be seen right under the Nuka Cola logo, well, if you're familiar with Fallout, it might be ringing a few bells. Of course, this little fellow also bears a striking resemblance to Vault Boy, another if not a more iconic figure in regards to the Fallout franchise. So a pretty cool double nod. I mean, personally, I've never played Fallout, but I'm sure some of you have. Running down a similar vein and into Helga's office, while we can find many ancient artifacts, there is one here that stands out. An iron and rather nordic looking helmet. Look familiar? This is of course the iconic Iron Helmet or Dulva Helmet found in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, famously worn by the Dragonborn in all of Skyrim's promotions and advertisements. Once again, the Wolfenstein series and the Elder Scrolls series are both published by Bethesda Softworks. And although the Iron Helmet in Skyrim has a base armor of 15, when you pick up this one, it will grant you 11 armor, which annoyed me greatly. Again, me personally, I have never played the Elder Scrolls games, but I'm sure some of you have. Now, as mentioned earlier, there are a number of ancient artifacts scattered around Helga's office, two of which are Egyptian trophies. Now, they may be a reference to the Cursed Sands prologue campaign that only appears in the PS2 and Xbox console ports of Return to Castle Wolfenstein. And while the Return to Castle Wolfenstein timeline and the current Wolfenstein timeline aren't the same, throughout the Cursed Sands campaign, you chase a woman named Helga von Bulo around as she tries to find magical and ancient Egyptian artifacts. So two Helgas doing the exact same thing in two different timelines? That's why I think these Egyptian artifacts are likely a cheeky nod to that Cursed Sands campaign. Now building off of these Egyptian artifacts, there are other artifacts from different cultures, some of which are just interesting like the Easter Island head, but others may have more clever ties to the Nazis. For example, this Grecian or Roman style pillar. If you look closely, it actually has barnacles on it, meaning it's been under the sea. Now, when you think of underwater ancient structures with a Mediterranean style to the architecture, we generally think of Atlantis. Now, in real life, Nazi mystics believed that the Aryan race originally came from Atlantis, and there were actually exploration parties actively seeking the lost city. So for this appropriately styled column to be here with barnacles on it, could this mean that the Nazis in the Wolfenstein universe actually found Atlantis? An interesting thought. And if you like that, we'll check this out. Upstairs in Helga's office, we can find the Paracas skulls from Peru. These exist in real life and are quite notable for their elongation of the skull. The cause of this elongation is debated, but they are often used as evidence for aliens on Earth or alien human interbreeding. 
I mean, think about it, if you had to design the skull of an alien, it'd probably look like this. That's why I think, rather like the Atlantean Column, these skulls give us a little nod to let us know that the Nazis in Wolfenstein are searching for, and have, possibly found aliens. And I must say, Wolfenstein the New Colossus may have traces of extraterrestrials. So keep an eye out for that, but more importantly, keep your tinfoil hat on. So this lady we keep speaking of, Helga, well, this is her lovely mug. Helga von Schubs appears to be a nod to both Helga von Bülow and Dr. Schubs, characters from the older Wolfenstein timelines. Looking at her face, it seems that her physical form was inspired by a true, real-life SS concentration camp guard, namely Irma Gries, the hyena of Auschwitz, the beautiful beast, the bitch of Belsen. She was sentenced to death for crimes against humanity. Executed at the age of 22, Irma was the youngest woman to die judicially under British law in the 20th century. Quite a woman for Helga to be based upon. Irma was also allegedly promiscuously active with other SS soldiers. She was also known to force herself upon prisoners, and she was even a bed buddy of old Josef Mengler. Now why is this important? Well, if we remember, Helga was flirting on the phone to Carl earlier, which could be a nod to her nymphomanic tendencies. Building off Helga's flirting with Carl, if we come over to this bookcase in Helga's office, there's a blue book that we can inspect. And, uh, well, you'll see. Hello. You found something? Uh, Carl. What? Nothing. This is literally the 1946 equivalent of send me nudes. I mean, forget Netflix and chill. Let's have our Nazi and chill. Helga, you minx you. Now moving well on into the game. Next up, we have a classic that can be found on the second mission, the grammar Nazi. Nazi. <laughs> also, ich legte im Bett neben diesem Mädchen und lag. Was? Du hast im Bett gelegen. Nicht gelegt. Legen, liegen, wo ist der Unterschied? Du legst Eier. Du liegst im Bett. Ich nehme an, du bist kein Vogel, oder? Willst du jetzt die Geschichte hören oder nicht? Die Sprache richtig zu können ist wichtig. Warum hackst du ständig auf jedermanns Grammatik rum? Weil ich an die Erhaltung der Reinheit unserer wunderschönen Sprache glaube. Damit wir nicht der Barbarei verfallen. Na, dann erzähle ich die Geschichte eben nicht. Ich sag dir nur, wenn wir... Ach, halt die Klappe! It's pretty self-explanatory, and for anyone who has avoided modern culture, a grammar Nazi is someone who uses and enforces proper grammar at all times, hence the double entendre in this situation. On mission three, as we approach Rudy Jaeger's room, we'll hear this. Ob es irgendwelche guten Bücher gibt? Ich sollte wirklich mal wieder was lesen. <laughs> Dieses Buch steht auf dem Kopf. Vielleicht ist das auch Absicht. Oh. <laughs> Once we move this guy out of the way, we will indeed see that there is a book and it is indeed upside down. We can actually interact with it and flip it the right way up. And I mean, sure, it opens a secret passage, but if we look at the book, we'll see that it is actually a copy of Shakespeare's Hamlet. This is amazing and all, but if we turn around on the table behind us, there is a skull which we can interact with. Alas, poor Yurik. <laughs> Oops. BJ will hold up the skull and recite lines from Shakespeare's Hamlet, and then clumsily drop the skull onto the floor. Now this might actually be a nod to the fact that Yorick, the man whom the skull belongs to, was a court jester. So in an appropriately jesterly fashion, BJ drops the skull onto the ground like a fool would. Also in Jaeger's room, there is a dog bed for Greta, his favorite hound. You've probably already spotted the caco demon dog toy in the bed, this lovely red spiky ball. A caco demon is of course a classic enemy from the Doom series, which was founded by id Software, the same company that popularized the Wolfenstein series. And to be honest, I never thought I'd say this, but this caco demon is admittedly cute. Now making our way through Jaeger's room, down the hallway and through the broken fireplace, we'll find a small hallway with four statues. While these statues are common throughout the game, these four, if we look closely, actually have nameplates. These names reference various people who can be found within the credits of Wolfenstein the Old Blood. Harold S. is Harold Simon, from Zenimax Europe. Heiko K. is Heiko Kaspers, who was a German sanitization tester. 
Detlef R is Detlef Richter, who was a German sanitized tester, and Chris H is Chris Height from the thanks list. A lovely and punctual way to be immortalized within the game. There is a similar yet less punctual fashion, but we'll go through that in the final Easter egg. Now in Rudy Jaeger's torture chamber, we can find some schematics on the wall that depict a Vitruvian man, which is a famous work done by Leonardo da Vinci. Also in here, we'll talk about the character who was driving the car at the start of the video, Richard Wesley. He is a nod to Webley slash Wesley, an agent from the older Wolfenstein game timelines, who died a captive in Castle Wolfenstein. Does this Wesley suffer the same fate? Well, play the game and find out. In here, there is also a chalkboard, and if you look ever so closely, you will notice the word Schweden, written out and spelled in the Swedish way, with the S CHW. Because there is little connection between the Wolfenstein Nazis and Sweden, other than the gaming studio that made Wolfenstein the Old Blood being a Swedish studio, we can only assume that Machine Games is giving a nod to their home country, because otherwise, Sweden has no relevance being on this chalkboard. Now next up in the cable car connection tower, down on the bottom floor we'll spot a rather familiar looking poster. Now I must give thanks to my Twitter followers for figuring this one out. Be sure to join them so you can help with the next Easter egg video. Anyway, here we can see a poster with a turtle and some text that translates to something like Shunker the Turtle says duck and cover, a message from the Department of Biochemistry. This is a direct homage to the 1951 civil defense social guidance film called Duck and Cover, which is often popularly mischaracterized as propaganda. This film featured a character named Bert the Turtle. Obviously this Shunker the Turtle is Wolfenstein's version of Bert. And he's doing the same thing, spreading public safety information that has a strange flavor of propaganda. Next up, back in the passport hot dog room, we can find this movie poster. And while I did give this one to Twitter to figure out, ultimately it was my very own mother that cracked it. So shout out to her. I will also use this picture of the very same poster from the concept art because it boasts much higher resolution of brightness. Anywho, this poster says the gifts of our homeland, along with a bunch of fictional names and so on. Now it is also worth noting that Wolfenstein the Old Blood is set in 1946, yet at the bottom of the poster, the date 1960 is clearly labelled, implying that this film, The Gifts of Our Homeland, is actually set in 1960. This is a reference to the 1994 movie titled Fatherland. It too was set in the 1960s and hosts a plot in which the Nazis won World War II. During the film, valuables stolen from the killed or imprisoned Jews are referred to as gifts. So this fictional title is likely a reference to that aspect of the film. Ironically, the fictional plot of Fatherland is the actual plot of Wolfenstein The New Order, the Nazis won. So this movie is actually a foreshadowing. Ah, next up we have a bunch of characters. Firstly, when we enter the village, we'll be met by one charming young lass named Annette Krauss. Now she is a reference to Anne Frank, a Jewish girl who famously hid herself away from the Nazis and kept a now world famous diary of the events that transpired. Annette here is modeled off of Anne Frank in both physical form and name. If you go upstairs, you can even find that Annette has been keeping a diary. Ain't that cute? But does Annette survive the Nazi occupation? play the game and find out. Next we have a man named Ludwig Kessler. He is a nod to Kessler from Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Both Kesslers play the same role and are met with and interacted with in a similar fashion. Finally, for the characters we have Rudy Jaeger, the man who laughed at the hot dog joke earlier on in the video. His physique and more nostalgically his mecha suit are a direct throwback to Hans Graus from Wolfenstein 3D. Both are towering blonde haired Nazi soldiers and they are both ultimately fought while they wear mechanical suits boasting dual chain guns. Now much further into the game during the sixth mission, when all hell breaks loose and we make our way back to the boat shed, if we take a second and look at the workbench here, we'll notice a super high resolution cigarette pack, lighter and cigarette case or holder. The lighter says Führer 2000 meaning fire 2000 and the cigarette pouch translates to evil asshole. While neither Twitter nor myself could figure out what this reference is for, I do believe that it's just a meme calling the Nazis evil assholes. Quite simply, the item belonging to the Nazis is labeled evil asshole instead of something more endearing. 
likely just machine games having a giggle along with the evil emoji face. Cause you know, emojis weren't really a thing during 1946. Now a few seconds after we grab the shotgun from the boat, this will happen. Hello. This is actually a reference to the 1987 film Evil Dead 2, one of the best films ever by the way, in which all undead hell breaks loose and the movie's protagonist Ash, while standing in a room boasting incredible similarities to the shed BJ is standing in, will saw the end of his shotgun off. Ash also uses the shotgun to stave off the forces of evil, just as BJ does through the next three levels of Wolfenstein The Old Blood. Penultimately, on the seventh mission before heading into the church, if we turn to the left and head up the stairs into the house, over in the back right hand corner there is a familiar painting, which we actually saw in the Wolfenstein The New Order easter egg video. This is a famous piece named The Young Hair in German. It is a 1502 watercolour and bodycolour painting done by the German artist Albrecht Dürer. Why is it here? Who knows, maybe the Nazis just have good taste. After all, rabbit does taste good. Now this final easter egg is brutally long winded, but definitely worth going through. But don't worry, I actually have a bonus easter egg for afterwards, just as a little treat between you and me. So on the final level, in the awesomely designed graveyard by the way, we'll find the names of just about every bloody person that can be found in the credits list of Wolfenstein The Old Blood. Keep in mind, if you were one of these people, this would be the greatest thing ever. For us, well, let's see how fast we can do this. Frederick Zed is Frederick Zar, a gameplay programmer. Tommy TB and Katria B are Tommy Tords Jon Bjork, senior narrative designer. And while she isn't on the credits list, I assume Katria B is his wife. Oscar G is Oscar Gothberg, who was an intern. Matthias W is Matthias Wenlund, who was a sound designer. Magnus L is Magnus Larsen, who was a senior artist. Oli R is Oli Rosenquist, senior gameplay programmer. Carl S is Carl Sturk, senior environment artist. Christian G is Christian Grorit, Senior Technical Level Designer. Johnny H is Jonathan Heckley, Creative Lead. Diedrich B is Diedrich Breitholst, Acting Quality Assurance Lead. Frida A is Frida Axelson, who is an animator. Lars J is Lars Johansson, Head of Production. Sandra S is Sandra Spore, Senior Animator. Emil G is Emil Gustafsson, Senior Technical Level Designer. Frederick L is Frederick Youngdahl, Senior Gameplay Designer. Nicholas R is Nicholas Raynor, Audio Director. Now Dan and Oana could either be Daniel Erickson or Daniel Johnson. Whichever one has a wife named Oana, I would imagine. Given it doesn't mention their last name, it's impossible to pin down which Dan it is. Theo S is Theo Severus, Senior Gameplay Designer. Marcus H is Marcus Hammerstedt, Senior Animator. Per G is Per Gullup, Senior Concept Artist. Yan D is Yan Dory, Effects Artist. It almost sounds like a slang term, Yan Dory. Now, Aral T, I do believe is Axel Torvenius, spelled incorrectly. He is an art director. Jim N is Jim Nara, an intern. Nicholas C is Nicholas Court, senior 3D artist. Eric H is Eric Hornstrom, gameplay designer. Backman is Anders Backman, senior AI programmer. JF Gustafsson is Jerk Gustafsson, managing director and executive producer. He's essentially the Todd Howard of Machine Games. Tor F is Tor Frick, art director. Pierre W is Pierre Wilbo, quality assurance tester. Carl Joan D is Carl Joan Dimming, sound and VO designer. Frederick S is Frederick Sturtman, senior environment artist. Jacques S is Jacques Sulz, additional game designer. Ivan N is Ivan Nesterov, who was an intern. Karian H is Karian Hagstrom, environment artist. Matthias D is Matthias Devoltaire, 3D artist. John J is John Jennings, senior producer. K Kind is Christopher Kind, gameplay designer. Arcade B is Arcade Berg, senior game designer. Peter L is Peter Luntz, UI artist. Patrick W and Isa W are Patrick Wilbo, senior gameplay programmer, and I assume his wife. Isa Wilbo, the office manager. Jonas N is Jonas Nordstrom, senior gameplay designer. King Jesper L is Jesper Lovius, the environment artist. And I do believe the one who is probably responsible for this entire graveyard Easter egg, considering that they have labeled themselves King. 
Jonas L is Jonas Larson, environment artist. Thomas L is Thomas Lidstrom, senior lighting artist. Magnus A is Magnus Orvenen, senior engine programmer. Matthias P is Matthias Peterson, concept artist. Now this is actually an interesting one because only the name at the top is in the credits list. Nicholas S, Nicholas Siren, senior character artist. And I assume he is shouting out his entire family, including his newborn baby, Baby S. Now there are four tombstones that I could not figure out who or what they are for. Sven E, if you're out there Sven, sorry buddy, you weren't in the credits list. Bingeling, again, if you're out there, you didn't make it to the credits list. And then we have H, U, A, and C, I, U. No idea what those are for. Then finally in the tent, there is a family tree of King Otto. Each of the names on the family tree can be found in the credits list. I'm not gonna go through them, or they'll have to add a whole bunch of new names to the graveyard, including mine and most of yours after our mass sacrifice after having to go through more credits. So post ultimately, if that's a word that I totally just made up, we have the bonus Easter egg. Now this one isn't actually found within the game, but it is found within the game files. And I do believe also in the game files of Wolfenstein, the new order. It is a movie poster and it is 100% a homage to James Bond. The poster reads as follows. My name is Bure, Jürgen Bure. In the main role, Stefan Kaufman with Ursula Adler. His code is 088. It is said he has a license to kill. If he chooses, where he chooses, whoever he chooses. Secret Agent 088, Jürgen Bure against Dr. No. From this, we can figure out that it is more directly a reference to the 1962 James Bond film, Dr. No. Boasting very similar poster designs. I mean, the movies have the exact same name. Obviously, instead of 007, it's 088. You get the point. Overall, an awesome Easter egg that nearly slipped through the cracks. Shame it was never in the game. And there we have it, ladies and gents. If you did enjoy this video, please do me a kindness and leave a like. Be sure to share it with your friends, leave a comment with your favorite Easter eggs in this video, and be sure to let me know if I left any out. And also, state any games that you would like me to make Easter egg videos for. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos similar to this one, please subscribe. It helps me know that people enjoy these kind of videos and in the long run will result in more of them. My other super smashing Easter egg video links can be found down in the description. Down there are also links to my social media. Be sure to follow me on Twitter so you can help me out when I get stuck making my next Easter egg video. And if you'd like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can become a heroic patron on Patreon. Again, all the links down below. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos I create for you to enjoy. So your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. A like, a subscribe, a patron, all of it is a great help. Feel free to check out the playlist on screen. Thank you for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon. Auf Wiedersehen!